Welcome to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. And today's guest is Rami Belson of EnergexInc.com. And Rami is a, a visionary entrepreneur who is bringing some significant advances in the world of energy savings and additional comfort. And you'll see what we're talking about here. So this is save the planet, save the balance sheet uh, type things that we're going to hear from Rami in just a moment. So let's welcome him to our show. Listen carefully. There's some great stuff here for you if you think about innovation and how to bring it to the market as an entrepreneurial owner, despite the fact that it's not always going to be easy to get somebody to say yes, even when it totally makes sense that they do so. You'll see when we get started with Rami. Hey, welcome, Rami, to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Hi. Well, look, it's good to have you on this call because I think uh, your company is uh, Energex, and people will start hearing about this, I'm sure, because you're doing some pretty cutting-edge things. But before we get into the business of your business, I'd like to just ask you a few questions about you, your journey as CEO, founder, owner. Just a few questions on that, if you don't mind. So the most obvious question is, why did you start the business? What 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 was the inspiration, the moment, the flash that happened that, that led you to start the business? Uh, I think that Eureka moment dates back to my early days as a new immigrant in Canada. Well, I noticed that every single apartment building kept their lights in the stairwells on. My back on it was such that you turn off these lights and never keep them on. So a bulb went on, so to speak. And my, my, my first go-to was, let's, hey, let's try to maybe combine, make it easy on people, because obviously they're accustomed to keeping the lights on and there are some possibly some code regulations and fire exits and things like that. But perhaps there's a way to turn off these lights that are running 24-7 uh, in some kind of innovative, kind of simple way that would help solve uh, sort of a better mouse mousetrap, so to speak. So I started combining occupancy sensor with hallway lights uh, and literally with the purpose of trying to save energy and helping people save money. And, uh, and that's how the business was born. The adoption of that technology Technology was very <laughs> difficult. I'm sorry, that's Nemo in the background uh, uh, <laughs> greeting our guests. Um, and uh, but what drove it was just I, I couldn't I couldn't figure out why would you want to spend energy and and money and resources when no one's there. And that kind of led on to uh, my whole the basic the, the foundation of my career of being involved with energy conservation, even more specifically, occupancy based energy conservation. So. Uh, things to do with uh, occupancy sensing, occupancy sensors. That's almost like part of the of our DNA, both personally and the company. And I think it's kind of how how it's been going along. Now, you you typically, if I understand correctly, your technology often gets adopted to use uh, for use in 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 facilities like hotels and maybe hospitals, whatever. I mean, where they have to solve that problem at scale. Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, at, at around 96, one of our, 1996, so that's a long time ago, one of our hotel customers actually pointed out to me that despite all the facts that they've taken, all the measures that they've taken in energy conservation, their energy bill was still about $28,000, $30,000 a month. And we had to go through and find out what caused that. So we literally went into the first woman and another and another. And by the fourth woman, I noticed that Three of these air conditioners were on with no guests in, in, in the room. So the fifth and sixth were pretty straightforward. I realized that this is actually a big problem because each air conditioner was using something on the order of, uh, of uh, 2,000 watts. That would be the equivalent of uh, some, but, but 1,800 candles all burning at the same time. And, and what's the point, especially when no one's there? So Again, the light the light bulb went off. We took our, our occupancy basing that sort of our, our, our history and, and 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 experience in occupancy sensing and building controls and combined it into a simple solution that are hooked up to the existing thermostats in those hotel rooms and an occupancy sensor and basically regulated the temperature based on whether people were physically in a room or not. And that led to the creation of, of Energex in, in its present format albeit a little more uh, uh, primitive back those days. Okay, wow. Well, and you know, one of the things going back to like 96, I mean, people were talking about energy conservation have been since the, you know, the original uh, oil crisis in the 70s. 
Yeah. But it hasn't been like what the way people are serious about it today. All right. So you are you uh, might have been going uphill a little bit in some cases, no? You you might be a little younger than me, but back those days, green was still a color and blackberry was still a fruit. So <laughs> uh, things have changed a lot since then. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I think the attitude, the awareness, uh, the drivers, uh, the, we, we all understand. I mean, that last wave, I mean, obviously we've been viewing global events, the way unfolding in record, especially on the environmental side, in terms of what we see around us. Uh, and uh, we, we, we can connect the dots or not, but I think more and more of us have been exposed to bigger and bigger signs saying, hey, something's really going on here. Uh, and, and, and it is a oopsie. I mean, I think uh, Greta said it today that would you go on an airplane where I had a 50% chance of survival? <laughs> so, and it's, it's, you know, it's a concern. So, and I, I think we're doing, and, Look, we have always had the drivers that accepted the technology. Everybody said, hey, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But we always faced with, with some basic uh, uh, objections, like what is the ROI? Is the ROI, does the ROI meet our corporate standards for ROI? And if so, how do you prove it? And if you have proved it, how can we replicate it in a way where we can create consistent results in other different types of operations and properties? So we continuously... We continuously had to uh, convince the convinced over and over to tell them, hey, the light in the fridge is really off when the door is closed. <laughs> you don't have to check the ROI on this. It's there. But it, it took, it still took, you know, more and more fundamental shifts in the system to understand that now it is a part of a variety of building codes. You just can't build with yeah. some sort of technology in place. Um, Fast forward a lot, probably 15 years forward, as the internet migrated, moved from, or not even moved, have evolved to include the IoT or have evolved to include other sections. Uh, then, then that was one of the first things that, that lent itself to solutions. If we know, we know what the weather is outside in your neighborhood right now, we know what to tell your thermostat to do because we have a variety of sensors all around you. We know the relative humidity and the temperature, and we know your set point, and we know the temperature outside, and we have predicted tables of all of that. And if we can gather all of that and, and pack it into an energy saving tool, now we can actually not just generate firepower in terms of the reverse firepower in terms of choking and denying energy from heavy using equipment, we could do a lot more of it. We can collect uh, a minute by minute performance record of each and every HVAC unit and find out if its compressor is finely tuned, if it's perhaps choked by air, or is this probably some other exterior uh, 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 elements around the buildings that are affecting particular HVAC system units within a building itself. And that's data that we always had, but we never collated and we never built it to the degree that we can today using the power of the IoT and AI to crunch more and more data and actually deliver, I don't know, X number of spotted owls back to the trees in terms of our conservation effort, in terms of what our impact, immediate impact. And they are, I don't think at any point they diverge from going hand in hand with the return on investment and the other return on investment, the green return on investment, the two are, 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 are hand in hand. So I'm, I'm happy to say that I think we, we, we show good achievement on both. Well, and that, that's an interesting thing because I'm going back to like 96, that time frame, And, um, and you know, I was, I was definitely doing business back then. And um, just on the Blackberry. What I had a BlackBerry. Had, <laughs> Who didn't? I had, yeah, I, had, I definitely had a BlackBerry. Uh, but what was interesting about that, uh, what you just described, it seemed to me, if I could tell somebody, like a let's say somebody running a, a five hundred room facility in Vegas, and say like, you do realize you're paying for the electricity when that AC is running in that room and no one's in the room. Even a guest who's like registered for that room, they step out. You want them in the casino. You want them eating restaurant. You don't want them in the room. Mm -hmm. It it's 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 a little bit mind-boggling to me that that was 
challenging as an ROI argument because that seems self-evident to me now. So how much of that is just we've just gotten smarter, management is looking at other things? Uh, because it seems like that seems like common sense, like, okay, well, yeah, you're right. If only I could, why wouldn't I? Yeah, you're, you're so right. You know, I just read the other day that MGM has, has actually purchased, acquired, and operating an entire solar farm to operate. They can imagine how much MGM has in Vegas in terms of pumps and air conditioning and gas and whatever. <laughs> so I, it's unbelievable to see the full turn that they've gone to understand, to commoditize the energy, to understand the levels of the, of, of uh, I'm sorry, I live in Canada, but I forgot the Colorado, like the Colorado yeah. River and watching the, watching the levels go down and understanding these are the water that are, that are keeping Vegas green and energy, energy through and the full circle that was done there, the back to is it a pay? Is this a better than two year ROI? So let's see how this fits within our whole Zen culture as a corporation, which is wow, it's a whole yeah, definitely have come a long way. So it so so it's interesting. So now you and I, I'm going to ask this question more for you as an entrepreneur owner, right? So mm. you're you're. You're looking, you talk, you probably leave a meeting sometime. Maybe you don't have to name names. I definitely don't name names, but I'm sure you've left a meeting or two where you go, I can't believe these guys don't understand that what I'm talking about will save them like a million bucks and they don't get it. So how did you keep encouraged? And I think that's something every entrepreneur owner needs. There's the, those moments. It's not all straight shot to the moon. It's There's mm. a lot of little peaks and valleys. And So how did you stay encouraged? through that journey, you knew you had the better mousetrap, but not everybody was ready for it yet. Now they're a lot mm. more ready for it. How did you just keep in the game, your heart in the game all that time? Uh, I think I think I often answer that question to myself, and I think that was the birth of my fourth child at the time. So I had a fourth baby on the way. My wife was a part-time teacher, and I realized that I really didn't have a lot of left or right uh, turns to have here. So everything, whether I was told, I think the fortunate part is as I pitched my idea, uh, there was a light at the end of the tunnel nearly every time. Now, that being the case is what sustained me. Okay. The, 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 the turnover for business was painfully long, unbelievably painfully long from the moment that they actually said, I think you have a good idea to actually, here's a PO or here's a check or <laughs> thank you for doing a great job. Kind I mean, of it, wasn't so 30, was, it wasn't a 30 day uh, sales cycle. <laughs> oh yeah, this was the one thing to always refer to and get, get in and in, 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 understand getting the game. What kind of, what kind of, uh, I, I think some kind of mental stamina is the thing that you need to sustain you through because it will easy, it'll be easy to just watch the bills pile up and, and the responsibility and say, wow, you know, um, you know, how much more runway can I have? Uh, and, and, you know, everybody behind you is looking at what you're doing, you know, from that little baby in the, in the, in the crib to, to the oldest that was, uh, 11 at the time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, no, I've been blessed with three kids. So I know, I know the motivation. <laughs> I, yeah. I get it. So I, I'd say that's probably a big chunk of what happened here. Um, uh, so some of it, I don't know, maybe you'd call it luck, maybe you'd call it whatever. Uh, definitely a lot of, a lot of, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of worries about Fridays, a lot of worries about, you know, uh, you know, having to hire or having to fire or having to, uh, all the decisions that everybody who have to make a decision, yes or no, 300 times a day, um, goes through. Now you as the you know so it's one thing for you to have that right mindset and like you say resilient you know and most entrepreneurs that are successful I just find are very resilient people they can mm. take a, you know they can take a no on Friday they might be a little beat up that 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 evening but by Monday they're back ready because they have to be right you don't have many many options yeah yeah but as you build your you. team not everybody on the team has that same mindset right so sometimes companies you know say well we're going to have some good values we're going to guide ourselves with some key principles we're going to yeah. keep our eyes on the prize so did you find that you had to hire people who shared your vision or did you do something special to keep everybody because again you're the you're playing the long game with your technology and i'm, I'm happy and it sounds like like now's the time like if ever there was a time for your technology it's like it's happening now so I'm i was told that 96 so <laughs> <laughs> so, but, and I think, but how, but how do you, as a leader, keep everybody in the right mindset? 
you know, I, I can't really say that because uh, we had, I mean, a, a big chunk of our business comes from hospitality. Mm-hmm. And the last 490 days has been a challenge oh, for imagine. the entire industry. I mean, we we still are reeling from a cataclysmic. And, you know, it's, it's the funny thing is that you have the hospitality and the travel and the airline industry, but you have all those supporting industries around it, people that sell them toilet papers and mm-hmm. people or provide them with services that have been, you know, so um, as far as the team, um, you know, we, we had, we had to, it was painful having to let the go of, you know, nearly two thirds at the time of what we were also a year ago, when you look at, you know, 500 days ago, we were so positive about how well the technology was performing that we we're just going to crush it out of the door. In fact, we did that then once we broke through the door, we realized that, you know, uh, I, I, oddly enough, that's kind of happened to us. We opened our door originally in May 2001, and that was four months before the planes hit the buildings in New York. Wow. And that was another decimation point for the hospitality and travel industry. And I literally saw it in my own eyes at the time. Well, not that not, I, I was in I was in, in New York in December one. Right. I know you're a New Yorker, so you remember right. what, what it was like. Oh, remember, and you were yeah. still cleaning up with the flags on the cars and everything else. And, and God bless America and everything else. And I think one of the things that I went to the, to the what's the big hotel outside Madison Square? Um, Pennsylvania Hotel. Pennsylvania outside outside hotel. Time, yeah. yeah, outside Madison Square Garden. And that hotel is about 1,500 rooms. It was one of the largest in New York at the time. Probably still is. And it was... Uh, Normally, on every day, I met I met with some of the management team, and we were meeting in the lobby. And at any given day, there'll be buses outside with loads of passengers, a load of guests that are checking in to all these points. And at that time, the Pennsylvania Hotel looked like it was deserted. There were maybe two desks with two people checking in, one or two, a few guests out of these fifteen hundred empty rooms. And you thought the sky is gone. I mean, I didn't even know why I went to New York to make a sales call. Uh, but yeah, so that wow. was sort of one of the experience that I that I kind of sort of almost fast forward going to to some extent with, 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 you know, some similarities, but not to the extent that we're going to now. So with respect to the team, um, so much of change you're trying to adapt now with this work from different places and find a new reality and a new normal and how much is enough and and so it, it's still a, a progress in motion what i decided whatever that progress is going to be all along that path i have a responsibility to try to at least make every day as good as i can at least on a personal level and whoever else i can help out in some way uh, that would be my goal. Uh, and I think if that works, kind of like the environmental and the economical, I think that that one works. And I think so far I can attest that despite all the skies falling, you know, we're still we're still here. We're still alive. We're still staying. And, you and know, in hospi- I mean, the inevitability is people do want to travel. A hospitality yeah. is going to come back at some level, but it's going to be yeah. maybe different. But even more so, it would seem to me that, these facilities, some of which are built for a different time, are mm-hmm. going to have to be even more efficient than totally. than before. Totally. They, they, uh-huh. The margin is much less, and to yeah, play with, yeah, yeah. If you have a building and you don't, and it's not covered with sensors, not just ours. I mean, right. hopefully we'll pick ours, but uh, uh, covered with sensors for everything else, from CO two to rats to rodents to 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 breaking windows. You probably already have all of them. The idea is really get all that information to more and more actionable uh, 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 monetize, monetize data. And, and we, are paying a, we are paying a small part of it, an important part, because energy and comfort, um, a lot of the time we treat them as separately. One was sort of people of comfort and energy, and, and we figured out. I don't think we figured out. We just approached it from saying, hey, this is holistic. We can do it so it works. I mean, a person doesn't know if it's 75 degrees or it's 21 C. He just knows that it's hot or he's right. cold. Right. And that's what we're trying to pay attention to and create a, a, a perceived, a, a somatic comfort where you're in your space and, and you know what you want and it's happening for you based on the remainder of the environmental conditions. Yes, it's a little bit of a big brother, but okay, so we, we have the data. What was the relative humidity in your womb six days ago? Big deal. 
you know, among the month, amongst the mountains of data out there that can probably harvest it for some, you know, negative or right, right, right. Know. There's, I mean, it's sometimes too. There's such a thing as. I know some people, don't, and I have friends who are like data analysts, and they don't believe this anything is too much data. But the point is, at some point, data is there to support decisions, right? Like, what can you do with it? What would yep. you do differently? So even like that, that, the uh, the room ACs, uh, candidly, I rarely go to a hotel. I go to decent hotels when I travel, and the ACs just are never great. I mean, it's just either too cold, too, you know, you can never get them quite yeah. right. Yeah. So. So those are real opportunities for them maybe to say, next time we retrofit, we get a better quality AC because we know our energy efficiency is going to be there. Yeah. I just yeah. see a lot of opportunities for yeah. somebody looking at doing what you do for them at scale. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, quick, as we come close to our time here, Rami, and again, thank you so much for sharing so much of yourself and, and, and of your business reality here. This was a challenging question because um, I'm not really trying to put you on the spot to have the answer, but just what do you think? If you, and again, most of our listeners would be fellow entrepreneur, owners, owner operators like yourself, running a business, you know, several million to, you know, tens of millions in, in size, mostly in the middle market. Uh, if you had one tip for them, just one idea that you said, you know what, this is something I learned or something I think I'm going to do this, you know, one tip for a fellow traveler, owner, entrepreneur like you, what would that be? I think probably the key word these days would be to go learn, learn as much as you can. Soak up, learn some more. It's all connected, so you gotta learn some more. You know, it's it's you live in a world that is evolving fast. Um, okay, learn, learn so you don't have to get it from news. Learn it so you so you know what they're talking about. Learn so you so you become a better better person. Learn so you can teach. Uh, all of the above, all of the above, I would say. Wow, that's uh, that's really good. I I love it. I, I made note of it. That's a spare of a moment. I wasn't ready, but no, know, that's good. That's, that's great. That's great. Go. I really appreciate it. Well, Rami, listen. Thank you again for taking time to join us on the Revenue Throughput Podcast. We really appreciate it. If somebody listening says, "Hey, this sounds like interesting," what this guy's doing, uh, what's the best way for them to find out more about you and your firm? Where should they go? They can go to the web and find us on energexinc.com. That's E-N-E-R-G-E-X-I-N-C.com. Okay, and we'll include that in the show notes, but for those of you only listening, it's energexinc.com. And I we've hope been... so. Okay, what was that? No, I said I hope so. I hope oh, yeah, no, again. great, no. great. So, Rami Belson, th- thank, uh, thank you again for, for spending time with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jose. That was great. Appreciated it. Cheers. Cheers.